Hey, it's Mike. And if you're a business owner and you've ever gone to lease commercial real estate space, there's probably a good chance that you have questions regarding the different types of leases that are out there. As a commercial real estate broker, I work with landlords who may have preferences on using a gross lease, a net lease, or a subcategory of one of those. In this video, we'll take a dive into the different lease types. We'll also discuss how it may impact not only your costs, but your responsibilities for maintaining that property. Lastly, I'll be sharing a free website service that you can use to run your searches and find those buildings that are available for lease. Let's get comfy. So there's two different types of main leases that we're gonna discuss. There's the gross lease and the net lease. On the gross lease side, there's two subcategories to that. There's what we call a full service gross lease and a modified gross lease. So the full service gross lease is pretty much everything's included inside that, or it should be. So usually your building operating expenses such as taxes, insurance, maintenance, all those items are usually bundled inside of one price. So when you're looking at price per square foot on a full service gross lease, there's a good chance that that includes all those operating expenses in that cost. It may also include utility costs as well, especially if you're leasing space, that, let's say it's like an executive office suite or a shared, a co-working shared space. There's a good chance that those items can't be separately metered, so the landlord might just put a full service gross lease in place. Now the next type of lease, being a modified gross lease, is like it sounds, it's modified. So there's going to be some expenses that you, the tenant, may be responsible for. One example I'll give you there is on the taxes, we may do what's called a base year. And so what that means is in the first year, we're gonna establish, all right, this is where the taxes came in, this is the base year. Any changes down the road above that number, you, the tenant, are gonna be responsible for the excess of that. And so that's something that is not uncommon to see. Another item that you may be responsible for on the modified gross side is the utility costs. Uh, those may be separately metered or the landlord may pay for them and then surcharge you back. Now let's switch over to the net side. On the net lease, there's a single net, double net, and triple net. There's also an absolute triple net. The different the difference between a triple net lease and an absolute triple net lease is really dependent upon who's paying for what. On an absolute triple net lease, the tenant is paying everything directly for those operating expenses, where on a traditional triple net lease, the landlord may be paying for those items such as the property taxes, the building insurance, the CAM, and then they're being reimbursed by the tenant. And so that all gets reconciled at the end of the lease year. And if there's any additional costs that the tenant hasn't paid for, then the landlord would get reimbursed at that time. Of those operating expenses, taxes, insurance, maintenance, what items are you responsible for? And so having an understanding of what type of net lease the landlord is asking for will give you an idea of, okay, so it's uh, they're asking for taxes, so that might be a single net. So I'm paying my base rent plus taxes. Or they might have it on a double net, so I'm paying my base rent, taxes, and building insurance. Or it might be on a triple net where I'm paying the base rent, taxes, building insurance, and common area maintenance. So generally speaking, those pass-throughs are separated out and in addition to the base rent. Other items to keep in mind on a net lease are what are you responsible for maintaining? So on a gross lease, you still may have some maintenance requirements. On a net lease, it is more common to see repair, maintenance, as well as replacement. And where this is common is gonna be on your mechanical systems. You may have a requirement that you're responsible to replace, let's say the rooftop unit for the heat or the AC unit. And so that might be something that's built into your lease. Uh, if you're a restaurant, there may be other items that you're responsible for, such as plumbing, electrical. It's really more common to see those items on the net lease. Now that you have a clear understanding of the different types of leases, you can refine your search to qualify properties. Go ahead and visit Crexy.com, and on here I'm going to click for lease, and then I'm going to search in Chicago. Up at the top, I can filter my search by the property type, the size, the rate, as well as exclude any undisclosed rates. I can even filter it further if I want to see single tenancy, multiple tenancy space, different classes of property, and the amount of time that it's been on the market. So let's say we're searching for restaurant space. So I'm gonna refine my search and exclude any undisclosed rates for this example. And I'm also gonna look at any new restaurants that have come on the market in the last three months. And lastly, I'll zoom in to the neighborhoods that I'm searching. So here's one that's listed, it's at $25 per square foot per year on a triple net lease. So this 
$25 per square foot rate is just the base rent. It doesn't include any of those operating expenses. And I've seen some buildings in this area that you could easily have $10 a square foot in pass-throughs, which when you're putting it all together, that puts you probably more in line with the $35 per square foot rate. Where in contrast, here's a building that has a restaurant space inside of it. And the asking price is between $26 to $30 per square foot. However, the lease type is a gross lease. So when we're comparing the two, the net lease versus the gross lease, this space's gross lease is actually more attractive from a financial perspective based on many of those operating expenses being included in that price per square foot. Now granted, this is just an example, but you can see how a net lease versus a gross lease may impact your searches. So having a clear understanding upfront and making sure that you're not missing out on those gross lease opportunities that might be priced a little bit higher because they already have those operating expenses built in. Once those properties are qualified, you're gonna be ready for the next phase, lease negotiations. More on that in this next video. Hopefully now you have a clear understanding of the different lease types and this hopefully will give you an understanding to keep understanding.